Good morning, church. Good morning. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord. Are, is the sound on? No, the sound is not on. Well, now I'll just use my pastor's voice, or maybe it's my old teacher's voice for a few moments until till we hit the right button at the right spot. I'd also like to invite those who are here online. Uh, one of the things that uh, helps to, if you're online, that helps you kind of set the space for worship is to find something that reminds you of God. Uh, this is a candle that I have. Ah, now we have it back. Uh, this is a candle that I have in my office, and I have it set to different colors. Um, today, I would invite you, if you like, those of the, who are online, to switch on a candle or light something uh, to remind you of the presence of God, because God is here, here in our sanctuary. God is here with those who are online. So we are also having communion today, and uh, I'll be giving instructions on how we're going to do that. It's a little bit different with uh, COVID-19 regulations, and also the fact that we have these lovely cords and things down here uh, right in front of the pulpit. So when we get closer to that time in worship, we will, I will give people specific instructions. And for those of you who are online, if you wish to come at 5.30 today, every Sunday that we do communion here at St. Paul's during worship, we will also be offering communion at 5.30 in the parking lot. Stay in your car. I will be masked and we'll be bringing you the elements that we're gonna consecrate during our in-present worship. So let us stand as you are comfortable and able and let us pray together the response of a call to worship. I will say the things in the lighter type, and I will ask you to respond with the darker type. Those who trust the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. In good times and in bad times, we trust the Lord our God. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, God's people are surrounded from this time on and forevermore. We are surrounded by God's goodness and mercy. We are surrounded by God's love and peace. The Lord does good to those who are upright in heart and do good. We believe that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We come to worship the Lord who surrounds us does good to us, and invites us to trust. Please stay standing as we sing our first hymn. I ask that you keep masks on to sing, and we're going to sing verses 1 and 4 of It Is Well With My Soul. Like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord thou hast taught me to say, it is clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trump shall resound 
And the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. You may be seated. For many people, uh, this is a holiday. Uh, Labor Day is being remembered today. We originally started as a holiday to honor unionized workers, uh, but now we celebrate all of those who work with their hands, their minds, their bodies. Uh, we also need to pray this week for those who are, want to work but cannot. Uh, many, many small businesses are struggling with the restrictions of COVID-19 and the months that they were not able to work. Um, I am a member of the YMCA, and many of us who go to the Y are rejoicing that on Wednesday they're going to be open again. But they, like so many groups, have had to struggle and reinvent themselves in some ways. They have become one of the um, major givers of meals in our community, which is one way they looked at their ministry, because the YMCA is a Christian organization, and said, what can we do? Uh, so we need to remember those who are struggling, those who want work and can't find it, who've been laid off. Uh, we also need uh, to remember those who are in our school system, the students, the parapros, the, all the teachers who are trying to figure out ways in a new way through online work uh, to be able to instruct their students. Uh, I did hear one story about a, a teacher who basically, uh, while she was trying to teach, the child decided to hang from her ankles in the bunk bed in the room, uh, which I would imagine would be distracting. Uh, so there's just a lot of challenges. Uh, we need to also pray for uh, our government as we face elections. Uh, it is a difficult time. Uh, one of the things that I've done is I'm not on Facebook much anymore just because of the animosity that's there and the, the conflict that's there. I have enough conflict in my life in general. I don't need to add any more. Uh, but pray for our government, pray for that we have safe and free elections. And pray for those uh, who are trying to find their way through the system. Those who are filing for unemployment, those who are filing for benefits, those who are trying to figure out how to vote uh, through mail, or if they're gonna vote in person. We all have our challenges, but we also always have God with us. And so let us at this time say uh, our corporate prayer. Oops, I am out of order here, I apologize. Let us go uh, to the community prayer and then we'll go back to the Old Testament reading. We give thanks to you, O oh God, our Creator, for mercy that reaches out, for patience that waits our return, for your love that is ever ready to welcome sinners. We praise you that in Christ Jesus, you meet us with grace, embrace us in acceptance, and affirm us as citizens of a forgotten universe. We give thanks to you that by your Holy Spirit you move us to change direction, receive your love, and become what we most truly are. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us then, O oh God, to accept your forgiveness 
to believe your love and trust your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we're going to go to our Old Testament reading. And this is from the book of Deuteronomy. It's chapter 6, 4 through 9. And any of you who are familiar with Judaism will recognize this prayer. It is called the Shema. It is the prayer that is the foundation of Hebrew worship. And also, as sisters and brothers in faith, is also part of ours. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and all of your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lay down and when you rise. Bind them as a signal sign on your hands. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them as on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Right. I apologize. I'm trusting my notebook and I got my things out of order. So I'm being very human here. I'm sorry about that. At this time, we will have our symbolic offering. We have a basket as people have come in and out. We have online giving through PayPal and through ACH transfer. But we also have the offering of ourselves. If we heard that last text, hear, O oh God. God is waiting to hear from you. And you are being called to respond. So we will sing together of the uh, doxology as remembering that we are giving our whole selves to God. Tim, there is a balm in Gilead. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded old. There is a balm. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded old. To heal the 
sin sick soul. Don't ever feel discouraged, for Jesus is your friend. And if you look for knowledge, he'll never refuse to land. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded old. sin-sick soul. You may be seated. Our second scripture today is from the book of Proverbs. We are going through a series here based on this book, Finding Peace in an Anxious World which goes through the book of uh, Proverbs and also has certain spiritual practices that draw us closer to God and closer to each other. So based on chapter two of this book, we're going to Proverbs three. And as you hear this proverb, think about what we just heard in the Shema. God gives us a path to walk, and the Shema lays out that path so well. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them round your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all of your ways, acknowledge God, and God will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It'll be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we begin this part of worship, I would like for us to pray together the serenity prayer upon which this whole series is based. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. have had one of the great debates in life. Do you use a paper map? Or do you use one of the many online services to get you around where you need to go? Now, I will name out my husband who's sitting back at the sound booth there. He's a paper maps guy. He likes to have it. He likes to be able to unfold it and look where he is going. I, on the other hand, have named uh, my Google Maps person Shirley because it's a voice system and it's a female one. So we will have Shirley tell us where to go. Sometimes that has done well, sometimes it has not. John and I both have one of our I wouldn't say favorite memories, but some of our strongest memories of going to visit my family in Southern Illinois and being, it was when I was up in uh, Everett, Michigan, serving there, and Shirley decided to send us to downtown Gary, Indiana in the middle of the night, and we got a flat tire. So one of our least fond memories of electronics directions was the fact that we went through a pothole, 
we got a flat tire and we're sitting at 11 o'clock at night in a gas station in downtown Gary, Indiana, unpacked, unloading our suitcases out of the trunk to get the spare tire. Directions are important. And whether you are a map person with a physical map or an electronic map person, maps and directions are so important. We trusted Shirley and she let us down. We're all looking for direction. We all want to find the right way to get us where we're going. And that assumes we know where we're going. We know the end destination. And we can either trace it here or listen to it and see it here. The people in this text in Deuteronomy were not unlike John and I, looking for the way to get to Alton, Illinois. We were delayed getting started. We followed Shirley blindly. We did eventually get to my family. The people of Israel went instead of just a six to seven hour trip, which turned out to be like 12 to 13, ended up 40 years wandering in the desert to find where they needed to go. And so this book of Deuteronomy, where we hear the powerful prayer of the Lord our God is one, is when they have gone through 40 years of wandering. And although it didn't always seem like the people of Israel felt God was there, God was there with them. Like a faithful mother, God guided them when they would listen. And like a faithful father would never lose forsake them. So now they sit at the edge of the promised land to go across the river Jordan and God is giving them some specific instructions. Now the idea of a path of a way to go is talked about quite a bit in this book and the author Brittany Isaac in this particular chapter, chapter two, identifies steps on that path. And the first one is moving from anxiety to acceptance. And how many of us have a hard time doing that? Because part of arriving at acceptance means to accept the call of God to work for righteousness, and justice, and then we have to go with bravery and courage down that path. Now, go in your mind and think about a road or a path that's a favorite one to you. Just kind of use your sanctified imagination and go there. Perhaps your path is very, very straight going through dunes to go to Lake Michigan. Maybe your path is something curving and winding, like some of the mountains in uh, Colorado where I have driven. Maybe your path is near the River Raisin. Wherever your imagined path is, you have to take that first step to get on that path. And as we are thinking about this statement, it's just sometimes hard to do. The first step is moving from anxiety to acceptance. We talked about anxiety last week with a breath prayer, 
where you breathed in the name of God and you breathed out your request. But I do find that accepting the things I cannot change is one of the toughest steps for me personally. Maybe it is for you too. Acceptance feels kind of passive. There isn't much action in acceptance because I'm better at changing things, maybe some of you are too, than just accepting things. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with the activist Angela Davis. And she is credited with saying, I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I am changing the things I cannot accept. And uh, that would change the serenity prayer a lot. To God, grant me the serenity to change the things I cannot accept, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. To change the things I cannot accept. The fallacy, I think, in that statement is that we are deciding personally from our human perspective what needs to change. It gives me permission to control my own destiny. It's all about me. And one of the things that the Shema teaches us is it's not all about us. It's about God. It's about the creator of the universe. It is about Jesus Christ who loved us so much as to die for us and to conquer over death. And the Holy Spirit who is with us always as Jesus promised. Prayer cannot begin with ourselves and our own ability to control things. It's a very self-centered prayer. The first step in this prayer is about, the serenity prayer is literally serenity and acceptance. Because these actions say that there is something bigger than us. And it gives us the opportunity to shrink down our egos, which may be trying to manage things rather than listening to God. I know for me as a pastor, one of the things that has been very, very frustrating with this whole COVID-19 situation is I can't control it. As a pastor, there's a lot of stuff I can suggest or control in terms of worship and working with the team on music and doing visits and doing all the different things a pastor does. Now, so much of what I used to do, what I have done all my life, or at least the last 25 plus years, I can't do. So to get from serenity to acceptance, maybe some of you can also identify with that. Orienting ourselves to something bigger than us. We have to start thinking that way. That there is something bigger and more powerful than just our own plans and our own desires and our own egos and our own what we want. I want us to think a little bit about Jesus because when we think about Jesus, I want us to go to the time right before his betrayal. He's had the Last Supper with his friends. They have gone to the Garden of Gethsemane, and in all four of the Gospels, they talk about what Jesus did after that. He knew that the next day would bring his death. He knew within a few minutes or a few hours, some of his best friends would betray him. 
And the only people who would stick around would be one disciple, John, his mama, and some of the close female friends he had. In Mark's Gospel, it talks about Jesus being distressed and agitated. He knew what was coming, and he was deeply grieved almost to death. So what does he do? He prays. And he prays that God would change God's mind. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus is going from anxiety to acceptance. And in his acceptance, he has loved us and he has saved us. It's not about what we want. And in American culture, that's what we're told is the right thing. That it's about us, and it's about what we want. But what Christ is saying in this powerful passage is it's not about us, it's about God. It's about the creator of the universe. It's about moving from that anxiety to not do what we want to do with our own limited human wisdom, but to listen to God and see what God wants us to do. Now, there's another prayer I'd like for us to practice today. Some of you may have gotten the email I sent out, and for people online, if you want to get those emails, please um, message here on Facebook. Um, Alicia is monitoring our Facebook feed right now for those who are watching live. It's called the welcoming prayer. And it's something that I think is helpful. Let me ask you something. How many of you are fans of NCIS? Okay, some of us are. This is not one of Gibbs's rules, but it is something he says to Palmer, the medical examiner he works with. And Palmer asks Gibbs, how do you do it? How do you block out fear? And Gibbs' response is, you don't. It's what you do with the fear. So this welcoming prayer, again, is another way when you are feeling anxious, especially about a specific thing. I would ask you, first of all, to let it sink in and become aware of whatever it is you're really anxious about. The thing that is worrying you, the thing that's hooking you, really, really well. And be aware of what your body is doing with that. So take a moment right now, if you have something going on in your life that makes you anxious, just notice it deeply. And then the second step is to welcome it and name it. Welcome, fear. Welcome, rejection. Welcome, confusion. And it sounds counterintuitive because our normal culture would say, ignore it, push it down, deny it. But what Jesus was able to do was name the fact that he was afraid to die. Any of you are familiar with any of the Harry Potter books? One of the most crucial scenes at the end of, of um, the Deadly Hallows was when Harry realized I'm about to die. 
not to deny the feeling, but to realize it. And then the third step is to let go and let God enter into that space. For example, you might say, I let go of the desire for security. I let go of the desire for control. It can be phrased in any way you want to do it. One of the examples of that prayer is written by a lady named Mary uh, Muskrowski. And for those who are of Polish extraction, I'm sorry, I've kind of murdered that name. But she started her day out with this prayer. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, I welcome everything that comes to me in this moment because I know it is for my healing. I welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. I let go of my desire for security. I let go of my desire for control. I let, good, I let go of my desire to change my situation, my person, and I am open to the love and presence of God and God's healing grace. I have to say that this particular prayer is hard for me personally to do because I have a natural tendency to want to be in charge. I had someone call me recently, a very strong woman, and um, there are many, many strong people in this congregation. But Jesus was able to move from anxiety to acceptance. And that is one of the things I think God is calling us to do in this prayer, is to move from that to peace. Now when Jesus moved from anxiety to acceptance in the Garden of Gethsemane, it didn't change the outcome. He did die on the cross. He was betrayed by his friends. He went through immeasurable physical and emotional and spiritual suffering. But God was with him. There were faithful people at the foot of the cross. And after three days, he rose again. So let us pray together the serenity prayer, paying attention to that second line. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And the people of God say, Amen. At this time, I'm going to move over here for Holy Communion. And I want, we will have the responses here, and as we are going through Holy Communion, at a certain time, uh, we I'm going to invite people to come up. And if you notice on the center aisle here, there are marks to keep social distancing. I would invite you to keep your mask on until you come up and you take it off to take the elements. We're going to start with this side, and if you're on the far end with the divider in the middle, go to the back and go around. We'll do this side first. Then this side here, I would ask, and the ushers will be guiding you, this side, go back and go around. 
because we do have cords here, and I don't want you guys to get in any tripping danger. Um, and then the people went out and you. And you will receive a cup, and you will receive a piece of bread. You can go off to the side to receive, you can uh, go back to your queue, whatever is the most comfortable for you. We lift our voices in praise. Creator of the table, in you we find our peace. In gratitude, we gather to share this meal. With thanksgiving, we gather to share our love for our need. As the sun sets earlier and the days become cooler, and the crops near harvest, we celebrate the plenitude of fruits available to us. We acknowledge the ways that we can use our gifts to care for our siblings in need. We extend our table through the work of our hands and the missions of this church. As we celebrate the sacrament, may we remember the laborers in the field, the harvesters of the wheat and grapes, the transporters of their fields, those who transform wheat into bread, and grace into juice. Bless their hands and feet as they labor at farms and gardens, in trucks and in warehouses. We give thanks today for the ones who prepared the table here. May their gifts of preparation and hospitality inspire each of us to extend hospitality to the strangers among us. After laboring in the streets of Jerusalem, doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with our God. Jesus took bread in his hands. He blessed the bread. He gave thanks and heartily expressed to his friends that this is the bread.
you will be given the little cup, I will be giving you the bread. 